In this lab, you configured an HTTP load balancer with backends in US Central 1 and Europe West 1. Then you stress tested the load balancer with a VM to demonstrate global load balancing and auto scaling. You can stay for a lab walkthrough, but remember that GCP's user interface can change, so your environment might look slightly different. All right, so here we are in the GCP console, and the first thing I'm going to do is configure the HTTP and health check firewall rules. So let me go ahead and do that by navigating to VPC network and specifically firewall rules. So you'll notice that there are already some firewall rules here for ICMP, internal RDP, and SSH traffic. Um, these are the ones that always come with the default network. And we're now going to create a firewall rule to allow HTTP. So let me click Create Firewall Rule. I'm going to provide it a name. It's going to be for the default network. I'm going to specify the target tags by using HTTP server. And we'll have to define that target tag on our instances later. Um, the source, I'm going to set to IP ranges and just set from anywhere. And then I can specify the TCP um, port to 80. That's for HTTP. And then we can click Create. And I'm going to create a similar firewall rule for our health checkers. So I can do that while this rule is being created. And uh, again, on the same network, I'm going to use the same target tags. So it just applies to instances that have that tag. And now for the IP ranges, I'm going to be a lot more specific. And uh, these are provided in the lab instructions for you, but these are the IP ranges of the health checker. Now when you enter those, make sure you enter one first. You can click space and you can see that it sort of has acknowledged that. And then you can copy and paste the other IP range and then click away and you can see that it's grabbed that as well. Now for the protocol supports, in this case, we're just going to specify all of TCP, but you could narrow that down a little bit depending on what kind of health check you're doing. So let me click Create on that. And while these are being created, I can now create my uh, custom image. So I'm going to go to Compute Engine, and we're going to create a VM. Um, we're going to call that Web Server. Let me go ahead and do that. I can leave the region as US Central 1, uh, zone US Central 1A, and I'm going to now expand this option down here, Management, Security Disks, Networking, Sole Tenancy. A couple things I want to do. First, under Disks, I want to make sure that this disk is not deleted when the instance is deleted. And that works because these are just persistent disks, they're just network attached. And on a networking, I'm going to define the network tag, HTTP server. And this is going to be for our default network. So that way, the firewalls that we just created are going to be applied to this instance. So let me go ahead and click Create. And once this instance is up and running, we're going to customize it by installing some software. So I'm going to just wait for the instance to be created. There it is. I can click on SSH. And I'm going to just run the commands that are in the lab instructions. So first, I'm just going to install Apache 2. And then I'm going to start the Apache server after that. And we're going to double check that server by navigating to the external IP address that we have here. And that is why we attach that firewall rule for the external IP. We don't really need the firewall rule for the health checker yet. That is going to be later for our backend instances. And we haven't really configured that health check yet anyway. Um, so here we are. It's um, still connecting. So let's just give it a couple seconds. There we are. I'm going to paste those two commands in there and let that run. And then I'm going to start the service. So let me now go back to the console and click on external IP. And here we can see the Apache 2 Debian default page. So we see that this has worked. Now I want to um, set that service to start on boot. So there's a command for that. So let me go back to my SSH terminal and paste in that command. 
And now I'm going to go back to Compute Engine. And for the web server, I'm going to select Reset. And yep, I want to make sure I do that. So I'm going to click uh, Reset on that confirmation. So this is now going to stop and reboot the machine. I'll keep the same IP addresses and the same persistent boot disk, but the memory is essentially wiped. So therefore, the Apache service is, um, should be available after the reset, and the update RC command should have been successful. So we can uh, wait for that. Uh, we have two options of checking that status. We could you know, navigate to the external IP address, or once it's back up, we could SSH back to the instance and just run a command um, to check the status. And it's telling me that the Apache service has uh, is, is actually running. So let's now prepare the disk, and we'll create a custom image from that disk. So first, uh, let's uh, get out of the SSH session, and let's verify one more time that the instance that we have here has a disk associated, that that disk is not deleted when I delete the instance. I can verify that by just clicking on the name of the instance. And then I'm going to scroll down to where it talks about my boot disk. Here it is. And under when deleting instance, it says keep disk. And if that was not the case, I could click edit and I could change that behavior. In our case, it's all good. So I'm going to go ahead and delete the instance. Here it's asking me, would you also want to delete um, that disk, which in our case, we're not going to do. Um, so we are going to delete the instance, and if I go over here to disks, we can see that here we have the disk itself. Now, um, we can go back to instances. We could wait for this to be deleted, but the disk will remain. So really what we can do now is get on and create an image. So I'm going to click on the images section, and here we have the images that are available. I'm going to create my custom image give it a name, my web server. We're going to use as a source disk, but you can see there are some lots of other options, like a snapshot. You could even do it from another disk um, or a cloud storage file. So we're going to do that from the disk. We only have one disk available, so let's choose that. We can keep all the other settings, like the encryption, the location, and I can click Create. So this is now going to create an image from that disk. And at this point, we could even um, delete the disk itself once that image has been created, because um, we're actually being charged for the disk while it's there. But for the purposes of the lab, we can leave that, as all your resources are being cleaned up in every uh, Quick Labs project that you're using. So let's go ahead and now uh, configure the instance template and create the instance groups. So I'm going to go to Compute Engine. And we're going to go to Instance Templates. And we're going to create a new Instance Template. And I'm going to give it a name, my web server template. We're going to change the machine type to a micro. We're just doing some very small prototyping here. And now the important thing is I need to change the boot disk to select my custom image. So I'm going to change that go to custom images, and here I have my web server image from this project. If you had access to other projects, you could also grab an image from there. It's all said, I can choose the size as well as the type of disk. I'm just going to leave those and click select. Now, I also need to make sure that I have the right network tags. So let me go and expand the management, security, and disk options. And by the way, you can see that this whole instance template UI is very similar to the VM instance template because all you're doing is you're just defining rules uh, for the VM instances. And once you create groups from those, it will just use all those settings. So under here, I'm going to go to networking and pick the network. And I can then make sure that I have the default network. And then I want to make sure that I have my network tags so that the firewall rules that were created at the beginning are going to be applied to all the instances created from this template. So let's go click Create. That really shouldn't take long. It's just going to create a template, not create any instances yet. And um, sometimes if I'm a little impatient, I'll just click Refresh. Now we see we have everything here. Um, so now I can click on Instance Group and create my instance group. 
So I'm going to start by creating an instant group in US Central 1. And this is going to be a multi-zone or a regional um, across the region US Central 1. I could look into the zones and maybe unselect certain zones or select more zones if I wanted to. This is going to be based on the template that we just created. And now the important piece is we're going to have some auto scaling. So we're going to have auto scaling on, and we're going to do that on the HTTP load balance usage. It's going to be on port 80. We want a minimum of one instance, a maximum of five. And we can leave the cooldown period, and you can hover over here to see that it just uh, waits that much time before collecting information. Um, so we have some initialization as instance. So we want to make sure that it at least waits those 60 seconds uh, before it starts looking into that. And then we can also go to health check. We don't have one yet, so we can go create a health check. And we can just call it the HTTP health check protocol. We could use HTTP or leave it as TCP80. And this is now what it's going to do is it's going to check every 10 seconds. It's going to wait five seconds in between. And if there are two consecutive successes, it's, it's successful. Three consecutive failures means it's a failure and means it's an unhealthy instance. So let me click Save and continue on that. And now this initial delay here. This is for the boot, so we're going to set that to 60 seconds. It's for the health check. And then I'm going to click Create. Now it's telling me that, well, the auto scaling isn't really complete yet because we haven't set up the HTTP load balancing. That's okay, we're about to do that. So let's just click okay. And we're gonna repeat the same now for our instance group in Europe West one. So let me grab that name. It's also going to be a multi-zone. Obviously in this case, the region is Europe West one. Same instance template, auto scaling, also based on HTTP, port 80, minimum one, maximum five, cooldown. And now we can just select um, the health check. It seems like it doesn't have that health check yet. That could actually happen if you just go into this too fast. So let's actually click cancel. Let's go back. Let's see if this instance group has been created. Let's try that one more time and see if we can get, get that health check. And there it is. Okay, so we're just a little bit too fast, so that can certainly happen. Let me backtrack, put my information back in here. Multiple zones, Europe West 1, my template. Whoop, I don't need to create one. I want to just select that. HTTP, maximum of 5, and set that initial delay again to 60. We don't want to uh, wait this long for the lab. And then we're going to click Create. And it's again giving us the same warning that we just saw. So we can just click OK. okay so here we can see the creation of this instance group. We can also go to VM Instances. And we'll see that one of the instance groups has already created an instance. So you can see it starts off with that name of the instance group. And MIG, by the way, is what I put in here. That's short for Managed Instance Group. We can see the scaling happening here. This one already has one instance. This is scaling from 0 to 1. You can actually click in here and get a ton more information. If I go to monitoring, uh, you'll see CPU usage, details, members. Um, it'll show us that it's scaling and how many it has. Um, so you can get a lot of information by either going into the instance groups page or the VM instances. So either way, we have at least one instance in each of the groups. So we are ready to now configure um, the uh, back end. So Let's just uh, verify these, actually. We can go to the navigation menu in VM instance. We're already here. And we could look into these IP addresses. I can click on both of these. And we'll see that both of them have the default page up. So that proves that the custom image that we created earlier is actually being leveraged here. So we installed all uh, that custom software, and our backend now has that. So let's configure the HTTP load balancer. I'm going to go to the navigation menu, uh, network services, load balancing, create a load balancer. Um, this is going to be an HTTP load balancer. So let's start that. I can choose if it's internet facing or internal only. So from internet to my VMs, yep. Click continue. I can give it a name, HTTP load balancer. 
And I'll start by configuring the backend. I want to create a backend service. I'm going to give it a name. And I'm going to select the instance groups. So let's start first with your central one, port number 80. The balancing mode is going to be rate, um, maximum of 50 rates per second, capacity 100. So just following the lab instructions here. So it just means that uh, that load balancer attempts to keep each of the instances that will happen there at or below 50 requests per second. So I can click done and add another backend, which is just the only other one left. And let's here, for example, use utilization at a CPU utilization rate of 80 um, and a capacity of 100. So that's just going to mean that this configuration means that the load balancer attempts to keep each instance of Europe West 1 at or below 80% CPU utilization. And I can also add attach the same health check here and then click Create. Now I could configure host and path rules that, that could define that certain traffic is being sent to other backends depending on the URL of the traffic. So video service could be sent to maybe a video backend versus static content to a static backend. We're not leveraging that here, so let's move on to the front end configuration. I could give it a name, but really I just need to specify the protocol, the IP version. Let's just keep it ephemeral, port 80. Click done. We can review and finalize. So here we have our backend, our instances, or I should say our instance groups, as well as our front end. I could also add, if I go back here, a, another front end. Um, I have HTTP. We could also add um, IPv6. So let's do that. And then we can finalize. So now we have two front ends, and we'll get two IP addresses. So let's go ahead and create that. And once that is up and running, we should be seeing two uh, addresses. And the one in hexadecimal format is going to be our IPv6 address. And you're only going to be able to navigate to that if uh, your connection actually allows it from where you are. Um, cell phones, for example, very often use IPv6. So you could uh, maybe try to plug in the address on your cell phone and see if you're able to access those uh, backends. So let's wait for that to load up. So if I click on my load balancer. Uh, it says the front end is just isn't ready yet. I went into here a bit fast. Let's refresh and just wait for that service uh, to be ready. And then we can go in and, and get some more information about it. Hi, right, so here I am. Um, the load balancer is now set up. Only took actually a couple more seconds. So here we can see the IP addresses. Again, uh, this is the IPv4, this is the IPv6. So the first thing I could do is I could actually just navigate to those using my browser because I did allow HTTP traffic from anywhere. So let me just plug that into my browser and first navigate to the IPv4. And I'm actually getting a 404 error and the lab manual does talk about that. So let me also open another tab and type in the IPv6 address. And, and run that. And it says it hasn't found the service yet. And so the line manual does talk about the fact that you could be getting a 404 or a 502 for a while. So what you want to do here is just refresh for a while. And what you're really just doing is you're waiting for this configuration to be applied to all of the Google uh, front ends. And so this is, again, a global load balance. This has to be applied everywhere. So the actual implementation, even though the console, it looks like everything is ready, the service can sometimes take some time to actually be reachable. And this can take I don't know, a couple minutes uh, to be set up. So just uh, refresh a couple times and let's wait for that to come up. All right, so here we are. Um, the, I'm looking at the IPv4 address, so I just refreshed it a couple times. and I can see the backend, which as we know, should be the Apache 2 Debian default page. And I'm also navigating to the IPv6 address. I actually have access to that here. Um, so that is working as well as expected. So now that we know that the backend is working, uh, it's time to stress test it. So what we're going to do is we're going to create another instance now and just generate a ton of traffic to the load balancer. And then we're going to monitor that traffic. So let me open up another tab here because I want to be able to come back to uh, the load balancer. And I'm going to create a, another instance now. 
by going back to Compute Engine and create instance. I'm going to define a name, just stress test. I'm going to put this in a whole different region now. Um, I'm going to select US West 1. Now, in terms of my backends, I have a backend in US Central 1 and a backend in Europe West 1. Um, the closest backend from this new instance that I'm creating is going to be US Central 1. So we would imagine that the traffic should be forwarded uh, from US West to US Central. Um, that's going to be un unless the load is too high. And let's see if we can actually break that and create a really high load so that we also have traffic that sort of spills over into the Europe region that we created. So I want to um, change the boot disk here. Let's actually create the, uh, select the custom image that we already ha have. That way we get a bunch of software pre-installed. And um, then I'm just going to go create that. And once that is up, I'm going to take the IP address of our load balancer. I'm going to store that in an environment variable. We'll verify to make sure that we have that. And then we're going to uh, place a load on it. So let's wait for that instance to come up. With any new project, you always have um, a lot of information here on the right-hand side. Um, that's useful to check out if, if, if you're new to GCP. I, the instance is up. Let me go SSH. And let's store the IP address. Now I need to grab that. So let me go back here. We're going to use the IPv4 address. And let me get my stress test back up and store that. Let's also verify, make sure this is stored and here we can see it's returning and it matches that IP address. That's great. And then let's run a command to place a load on our load balancer. Okay, so this uses Apache Bench and it's not going to benchmark this. And this is now going to run in the background. So now what I can do is I can go back to my load balancer, which I'm looking at right now. And um, if I'm looking at this way, I can actually directly look at the backend and click on HTTP backend. And um, we don't really have any traffic yet. This takes a little while to update here. We can see the two backends we have. We can see that one is scaling on rate, one is scaling on CPU utilization. And once we have a lot of traffic, we'll start showing here where that traffic is coming from and which instance it is going to. Um, so what we want to do is just hang on here and refresh this page for a couple of minutes until we can actually see some traffic being generated. So let me actually just go back and go back in here and uh, no traffic yet. So let's just wait a minute or two and see what we can uh, visualize here. Hi, right, so this only took a couple of seconds. So here we are, we can see that there's a lot of traffic coming from North America, that's from our stress test. And we can see it's going both to US Central 1, which is the closest, and that's where most of our traffic is going, most of requests. But we also have some traffic that is actually spilling over to our Europe West 1 instance. So we can see that we have global load balancing um, here. And what we could do now is also we can monitor the backends to see if they're actually scaling. So if I go to Compute Engine and refresh, oh, we can already see that we have a bunch more backends now uh, that are trying to handle all of this sudden increase in traffic. And I, I really am stress testing this quite a lot. If I go to Instance Groups, we can get more information here. It's saying that it's already having issue with the amount of instances I've selected, the maximum, that is five. Uh, if we go in here into the Europe S1, we can get more details and monitoring. So it's showing us how it's scaled up, how it's managing the load that's being placed on it. And we could also look in US Central 1 and see that we now have up to five instances already across different zones. And I can also go into the monitoring here and get more information and see that you know, when we scaled up and um, if we refresh this a little bit, we'll see more instances in here. And I'll talk more about the um, capacity it has. I can come back here. Now we can see that we have 
because I really provide a very minimal traffic to your central one, just 50 requests per, per second, but I'm making you know almost 281 here. So now we have a lot of the traffic is spilling over. So this is a really good view to come back to, um, to always monitor your load balancer. Visually, you can also use Stackdriver, logging and monitoring. You can set up alerts, you can set up rules. Um, so maybe you need to you know, increase that maximum limit of five now. Um, you know, that's really a cost limit. You set that so that you, you don't exceed your cost too much. But if you're saying, oh my God, I need to uh, work on this traffic, uh, you could have more instances. Uh, maybe you're getting an attack actually. That at that point, you could use a product called Cloud Armor to maybe allow and deny certain IP addresses. Um, but this is really uh, all we wanted to achieve for the lab.